Today's scripture will be coming from Romans 10, verse 15, and it reads as such. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. Amen. I just read Romans 10, 15, and God had a blessing to the readers here is endurers of his holy word. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Amen. I will pray 
today. Our God for the future and hope to come, Lord. Father, we come this morning to say thank you. Come realizing that you are God and beside there is no other. Realizing that you are Alpha and Omega, Lord. Realize it's because your mercy and grace kept us all week long. You took us over highways and byways. You brought us through seen and unseen danger. Father, we know that you are God. Beside thee, as I said, Lord, there's no other, Lord. And so, Father, we come to give you some praise. We come to give you some thanks. We come to be obedient to your word this morning, Lord. We come thanking you that we was able to rise from a sleeping slumber this morning. We thank you that you closed us in our right mind. You gave us the useless our limbs, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for your word, your promise that we was able to step out and stand on them once again, Lord. So, Father, we say thank you. We thank you for how you've been walking with us and talking with us, how you've been keeping us, Lord, how you've been blessing us. We say thank you. Father, we just thank you for those who are here in the house this morning, Lord. Even though it's raining outside, but they have a desire to come and give you praise and thanks. Father, we thank you for those that are watching online this morning, Lord. Father, we don't know why some don't come. But, Father, we pray that one day they'll heed to your word where it says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, coming together and praising you, Lord. So, Father, but we thank you for them anyway, Lord. Thank you for this congregation called Second Baptist, Lord. We thank you how you continue to bless us, continue to keep us, Lord. Continue to walk with us and talk with us, Lord. Father, we thank you for our pastor this morning. Ask that you will speak to him and speak through him that we may hear from heaven. Not only here, Lord, but we take your word unto the highways and byways and share with others that they might come to know your son, Jesus, as their personal savior. So, Lord, just bless this morning. Bless this musical ministry this morning, Lord. Not they voices that they might sing with power on high, Lord, that you may get the glory this morning, Lord. Father, we ask it now that thou remember the sick and shut in. Asking that thou would just look and have mercy. We thank you for how you've done already, Lord, how you've kept them already, how you heal already. But, Father, we ask you now that look and have mercy. There are many abound from different diseases, Lord. There are many bound from alcohol, bound with drugs, Lord, bound with confusion, Lord. We pray that you would just deliver and set free in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
Father, we have members in the nursing homes, Lord. We pray that you just look upon them and have mercy upon them. Father, we have members traveling over the highways and byways this morning, praying that you give them traveling grace in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Brother Oliver's father up to you this morning. Pray that you would just touch. Bless as only you can. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. For you're worthy, Lord. Father, we thank you that you've been so good to us, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. You've blessed us. You've strengthened us. You've given us a desire to want to serve you. You've given us a hunger for your word, Lord. We say thank you. Father, remember everyone that's on the sound of my voice this morning. Bless their homes. Meet them at the point of their knees, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. First in your son Jesus' name, we pray and ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. Man, good morning, Second Baptist. And welcome to Back to Church Sunday. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise if you don't mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I greet each of you in the name and faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift, for I heard the Apostle Paul declare that it is in him in which we live, we move, and we have our being. And we here at Second Baptist would like to welcome those of you who are here for the first time or have come back to church after being away for a long time. And therefore, we would like for each of you who fall into that category to meet us at the Welcome Center immediately following service for a short reception so that we can love on you for a little while. Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone once again. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to welcome everyone once again, those of you joining us in person as well as those who are online. And just a reminder for those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning, welcome back to you as well. And please be sure to check in on our live stream. Let us know that you're coming back to church online, and we love to hear from you so that you can tell us where you're joining us from. Listen, our sole purpose for gathering here today is the worship and the praise of our awesome God, and we invite each of you joining us in person as well as those who are online to help us praise the Lord up in here, up in here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, Dr. Edmund. Amen. Amen. How we thank and praise God for the presence of our Pastor Emeritus, none other than Pastor Nathaniel Edmund. And so good to see you, Christine, as well, looking lovely as always. Amen. I do not come to tell you something that you do not know, but rather to remind you of something that you should never forget. These are my pastoral observations for Sunday, September the 17th. 2023. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Please be sure to join us this week as we continue our very helpful discussion of the exciting story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Also, thank you so much. Thank you so much to those of you who remain faithful in your giving, particularly in times such as these. And we do not take it for granted that most of you continue to give and give faithfully even in difficult times. And so we thank you so much. Please remember to utilize our drive and drop service at any time throughout the week. You can drop off your offering, pick up extra offering envelopes as well as devotionals as well. And so we thank you for that. Also face coverings. Face coverings are optional here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin for all worship services, activities, and events within the building. But as always, please, ma'am, please, sir, stay at home if you feel sick. Thank you so much 
for your cooperation. And then just a reminder as we come into worship that the bus that we have is up and running. Amen. I want to remind you the bus is up and running. We have two buses. So amen. If any of you have a problem getting to church, then you can call the church office, leave a message, and someone will be there to pick you up, providing that you are within the zone, the area in which we go. And so be sure to reach out to our administrative assistant, Zanthea Hicks, or our deacon ministry. We can tell you the boundaries. And they extend all the way in some parts to Schomburg and other various places. So if you're watching from our home and you want to make it to the house of worship, the bus is available. Amen, amen. Also, please feel free to drop off your one to five-year-olds at our wonderful nursery. And if you have children aged six to 12 years old, please consider releasing them to our children's church ministry. We promise to take real good care of them. Amen. And then also, before I move into my other announcements, I just want to thank uh, those ministries that were participating at the soup kitchen on this past Friday. Come on, give, give them a hand. We had a tremendous... A tremendous turnout. Amen. So many singles were there. So many ushers were there. Amen. And what was the third ministry? What was the third one? The deacons. Oh, the deacons are always there. The deacons are always there. Amen. But there was a tremendous turnout for people who were just excited to serve and do something good. And so I encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, those of you who want to be a part of a ministry where you can have meaningful relationships, because that's when we really get to know each other. You know, it's hard to get to know somebody in the context of worship. But when you're out working shoulder to shoulder with somebody, that's how you establish relationships. Amen. And so we encourage you to take part in the ministry in some way, shape, or form. Also, also, please be sure to join us this afternoon at 3 p.m. for the minister ordination service of eight of our ministers. Amen. Come on, give them a hand, praise. They've been so dedicated, working so hard. We are so excited about what God is doing in and through the lives of these servants of God and our very own Pastor Emeritus, who's just made his interest right on cue. The Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Lewis Edmond will be delivering the ordination message this afternoon. So please come on back. Come on back. Those of you at home, come on. Come on back this afternoon and show your support. We hope to see you all then. Amen. Also, also, just a reminder, our church business meeting, our church business meeting will be this Friday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We are continuing to conduct our meetings via Zoom. Why are we doing that, someone might ask. We're doing it so that we can give everyone the opportunity to attend. So please, ma'am, please, sir, those of you who are members of this great church, join us so that you can know what is going on in your church. Amen. There are some exciting things going on within the ministries of Second Baptist Church. So be on the lookout for the meeting link, which will be sent out through Flocknote. So thank you so much for your cooperation. And speaking of Flocknote, speaking of Flocknote, if any member has questions about how to log into, use, or access your information in Flocknote, the PR ministry is here to help. Amen. I mean, they are really here. Amen. They're really here to help. As a matter of fact, immediately following service today and on next Sunday, the 24th, members of the PR ministry will be here on site to provide assistance and answer any questions that any of you may have regarding flock note. And if you are not available to meet them on today face to face, you can send them your questions at any time to PR at sbcelginil.org, and we'll give you a good answer to your questions. Listen, I've said it before, our whole desire is that we direct every member through Flocknote because that is how we stay connected with the good people of Second Baptist Church of Elgin. And speaking also of the PR ministry, the PR ministry is currently supporting all social media, graphic design, and website content. So if anyone has interest, in assisting with the outreach of the church in the digital space. They would love to have you on the PR ministry. Now, this invitation is also extended to the youth of our church. Amen. Get the word out. It's extended to the youth of our church as well, because as you well know, 
oftentimes they tend to know more about IT than many of us do. Y'all don't have to say anything. I can say for myself. You better find you a young person if you want to know something about some IT. Amen. And we think that they would be key in helping our PR ministry to enhance our digital presence. Amen. So if anyone is interested in joining this vibrant and exciting ministry, please be sure to email them at once again, pr at sbclginil.org for more information. And then just a reminder also as we are fast approaching the month of October, beginning on the first Sunday in October, all Sunday school classes all Sunday school classes will begin at 9 a.m. The adults and the children, they'll start together. Please take due notice and govern yourselves accordingly. Also, on Friday, Friday, October the 6th, from 6.15 to 8 p.m., our SBC Youth Ministry is sponsoring an open gym basketball event. I'm left-handed. For children age 10 and up, that would include me, amen. And so we're asking all of our young children to put down their video game controllers, get off the couch, and come on out and shoot some hoops, amen. Please be sure to visit our website at www.sbcelginil.org for more information. Please, please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to pray for the sick and the shut-in. And I invite each of you to join us for our weekly prayer line. That's every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you, lead, you need the log on information, please see a member of our missionary ministry or contact Sister Cheryl Macon for more information. And for those of you who desire specific prayer on Sunday mornings, please join our missionary ministry immediately following morning worship in rooms 205 and 207. There someone can pray with and for you and help to meet you at your point of need. And now, before we receive our tithes and offerings, our SBC Hospitality Ministry will come on behalf of the church to bring official greetings, say amen, oh Lord, as they come, amen. Good morning, church. <laughs> this is the time in our service that we set aside to greet our visitors. Visitors, as I call your name, could you please stand? and remain standing until everybody has received official welcome. Are there any visitors here for the very first time? Could you please stand? <laughs> On behalf of Pastor Parks and the Second Baptist Church family, we want to thank you for coming to worship with I us today. We know you had many choices and places to worship, but we're so delighted that you chose to worship with us. If you're looking for a church home, please consider Second Baptist. Again, thank you for coming. You may be seated. To our online visitors, thank you for joining us. You may contact us using the contact link to let us hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, you can leave it there. Thank you again. Have a good day. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming out to join us. Perhaps maybe you came on your own, but I like to think that if you're here, it's because someone invited you. And so we thank God for whoever it was that you were in contact with to put it on your heart to come and to worship with us today. And so we are grateful. And now, as our music ministry prepares to come, let us take this opportunity online as well as those who are in person to receive our tithes and our offerings. It was the Apostle Paul who reminds us in his letter to the church at Corinth, let every person, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I want to ask at this time, Reverend Love, to come and offer up our offertory prayer. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, again, we come thanking and just praising you for the privilege and the opportunity, dear Father God, to give back to you that which you've given us. Lord, we pray right now that you would bless this offering, bless those that are giving, those that had the desire but yet not the means. We ask that you would bless them likewise. Bless us as we continue on this day. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's receive the music ministry now as they come.
morning church come on come on come on good morning church good morning. I am here because of the song that we're about to sing I wasn't prepared I ain't got no speech or nothing but I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit to just share what's on my heart uh, as I looked out at everybody some of y'all probably probably remember Ricochet Rabbit Sheriff Bing 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 well, I mention that because if you remember the cartoon, when the bullets were shot, they would say, pew! Anybody know what I'm talking about? And the reason why I told that story is because 
in real life. When a bullet goes past your ears, that's what it sounds like. Pew! So what I'm testifying this morning is that I've had bullets go by my head. But I'm still here. Yeah. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. So as we sing this song, well, I'm not going to sing, but as the choir sing this song, it's serious business to me. The song name is My Worship is For Real. Yeah. And as I look out at church family, I know that many of you, if not all of you, your worship is for real. Because I remember when you cried and said you needed prayer and God brought you through. I remember when you needed this and you asked the church to pray for you and God provided. So if we sing this song, I want everybody worship to be for real. Don't look to the side. Don't worry about what nobody else is doing, but let your worship yeah. be for real. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my worship is, 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about nobody else, but you can't just sit there and listen to that song and, and not go to playing back the memory of your roller deck and thinking back on all that God has brought you through. And you recognize that if nobody but the Lord, you can't take credit for it. You ain't that smart. You ain't that rich. You ain't that connected. It was nobody. It wasn't nobody but God that brought you through. And because he brought you through, you owe him. You owe him the praise that is due. Come on, let's worship God all over the building. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our worship is real because we serve a real God. Amen. He's great and he is greatly to be praised. Let's bow for a word of prayer. There's a charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. And fitted for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. And may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Our Lord and our God, we come before you today declaring that we're grateful. We thank you for being God all by yourself, and beside you, there is none other. And now, O oh God, as we set aside this time, we seek to hear a word from you. For in times like these, if we don't hear from you, we won't know what to do. So our prayer this morning is that you would speak with my mouth and think with my mind, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So much so that when we go down from this place, we might rejoice being glad that we showed up this Sunday morning on this back to church Sunday morning. So forgive us of our sin. Fix us for this worship experience. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God, and then feed us until we want no more. These and other blessings we pray in the matchless, the merciful, the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And all God's people said amen, amen. and amen. Come on, let's all stand. Let's all stand as I read in your hearing the thematic scripture for this morning. Amen. The thematic scripture for this morning comes out of the epistle to the Roman church. Chapter 10, verse 15. One verse. The New Living Translation reads on this wise, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. And before you have your seats, in the traditional King James Version, every time I read it, I just want to holler. It reads on this wise, and how shall they preach Caruso except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Have your seats in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. How shall they preach except they be sent? For just a little while, for the time that is mine, I'll preach and teach with this thought in mind. Sent to be a blessing. Amen. That's what we want to talk about this morning. Sent to be a blessing. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. This afternoon, as many of you know, we will be ordaining eight of our associate ministers who serve on our ministerial staff. And I have you to know this morning that ordination is an affirmation of the call that they have already received from God. Ordination is a continuation of the work of the ministry. Ordination is a separation. 
for sacred service. Ordination is an elevation that draws more attention on every aspect of their lives. And that is why Paul encouraged Timothy to throw yourself, throw your, hurl yourself into the tasks so that everyone will see his progress. He said, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. And as we consider the text before us this morning, my prayer for everyone here today, but more especially those called to carry the Lord's gospel is whatever God has called you to do and uh, uh, wherever God has called you to go, that you do and go with the understanding that you have been sent to be a blessing. Oh, yes, you've been sent to be a blessing, not to be bothersome or burdensome, but rather you've been sent to be a blessing. You've been sent to bless, not curse, to build up, not to tear down, to soothe, not to disrupt, and to unify, and not to divide. I felt pretty good when I woke up this morning. Beloved, the God of heaven has sent each of us into this broken world to be a blessing. Oh, tell somebody this morning, I want to be a blessing. I'll tell somebody else, I want to be a blessing. Is that your prayer this morning? No wonder the hymn writer said, if I can help someone. As I pass along, if I can cheer someone with a word or song, if I can show someone he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian, or if I can bring salvation to a world once wrong, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. That listen, when it's all said and done, our living will not be in vain when at our homegoing service we can be like Sister Betty Span, <laughs> where there will be present more than a few persons in our community, in our family, and in our circles of influence whose lives have been positively changed for the better. As a result, of our interactions with each of them. And that is why in our mission statement, that as we seek to live and learn God's word together, we here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin, we seek to be and to become a compassionate and welcoming group of Christ followers who are soul redeeming in our contacts which means that our sole purpose is to win souls for Christ. But we should also be sincerely relational in our care, which means that we want to sincerely love on folk for the purpose of establishing genuine relationships, but lastly, that we seek to be socially relevant in our community. Because we learned the other day that our God is a God of justice. And because our God is a God of justice. He expects us to call things out when we see that they do not line up with his will, his way, and his word. And it is my prayer that upon the conclusion of this sermon, each of us present here today from the pulpit to the pews would be reminded that God has sent the members of his body, the church, the ecclesia, out into this world to be a blessing. And that's why Jesus told his disciples the other day, let your light so shine before people that they would see your good works and cause them to glorify your Father which art in heaven. 
at the time of our text, Paul is writing to God's redeemed in the city of Rome to remind them of the righteousness that they now have in Christ Jesus and how it has been accomplished on the cross. As a matter of fact, he writes in chapter 3, verse 22, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Watch this. To all, somebody say all, all. who believe. And he says that there is no difference for all, somebody say all, all, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. In other words, all have sinned, both Jew and Gentile alike. And likewise, all have been given the opportunity to be made right with a merciful God. And that being done through the blood of Jesus. And then as we approach the point of preachment, and then I'll soon have my seat, I'll shout my own self happy. He says in chapter 10, verse 4, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all, somebody say all, all. who believe in him are made right with God. In other words, Christ is the agent, is the means through which God's righteousness is realized. Christ is the way for those who have fallen to receive forgiveness. Christ is the way for we who are sinners to become saints. I tell you, Christ is the way for we who are wrongdoers to become righteous. And that's why Paul makes it clear in chapter 10, verse 9, when he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God, I'm preaching real good up through here, hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then here it is, y'all, as if that were a bit too difficult to grasp. Maybe that's too much for somebody to do. He adds in verse 13 of our text, for whosoever, look at the inclusiveness of God. Long before inclusiveness was a thing, God was already an equal opportunity God. Hallelujah. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's good news this morning. I tell you, that's the best news you're going to hear on this morning, on this Back to Church Sunday. And if my drill sergeant from Tank Hill was here, he'd say, Private, I can't be no plainer than that. It's as plain as I can be. Listen, Jesus is the answer for the world today. And above him, there's no other. I came to tell you that Jesus is the way. And as Paul continues to hammer his thesis on Christ being the righteousness of God, beginning in verse 14, here I go, Paul raises four rhetorical questions in route to our point of preachment this morning. In verse 15, where he says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? That was the first question, verse 14. How can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? Listen, in other words, there's no use in calling on someone if you don't sincerely believe that they can help you. Lord have mercy. I want to talk to this side. I'm feeling the luck talking to this side. You ever been in a jam? You don't call somebody who can't do nothing about it. I mean, if you was in a jam, I hope it ain't the jail, but if you had one phone call to make, I don't know if they still do that. I mean, I ain't been in a jail cell in quite some time, but, but do they still say you got one phone call? Do they do that? Oh, ain't no, you're acting new on this side. I say, do they do that? I know some folk been to jail on this side. They give you one phone call. And if you had one phone call to make, you would call somebody. I wish I had somebody. Who could do something about your situation? Have I got anybody in here? And, 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 and so, so Paul said, who you going to call? You ain't going to call Ghostbusters. You ain't going to call Tyrone. 
you're going to call somebody who can do something about it. Have I got a witness? In other words, he's saying essentially, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ can really save you unless you're going to call on him. There's no use in calling on Jesus unless you really believe. I mean, you really have confidence that Jesus can show up when you need him most. I dropped by to tell you Jesus is the police. He's like calling 911 because he sets things in order. Jesus is the fireman because he can put out any fiery situation in your life. Jesus is the lifeguard because he can throw you a lifeline and pull you up out of your drowning situation. Jesus is the doctor because he's the balm in Gilead to wait to make the wounded whole. He's the balm in Gilead to heal our sin sick souls. And then Paul he goes on to say, and how can they believe? Believe, which is to say, how can they put their confidence in someone if they have never heard about him? Thank you, sir. And how can they hear about him unless somebody tell them? In other words, the only way that people will ever know that Jesus saves is if we tell them. Somebody got to tell them. Somebody has to tell them. Listen, even in the 21st century, with all of the information that is flying about the airways, we cannot assume that everyone has heard the good news that Jesus has set us free from our sin. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth this morning. Listen, President Abraham Lincoln issued the final Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, setting free all enslaved Africans being held in the Confederate States. You get to learn something when you come to church here. But it was not until June 19. 1865 <laughs> in Galveston, Texas that Major General Gordon Granger issued General Order Number 3 informing enslaved Africans of the good news that had been issued two and a half years prior. In other words, they were free and didn't know it. Lord have mercy, you preach it good. I said they were free and did not know it. And like our ancestors, there are many of y'all looking at me the way you're looking at me right now. They're looking at me from online. They're looking away. They're walking around today. They're free. And they don't even know it. They're willfully walking around in bondage. Look at here. For y'all who play Monopoly, they got to get out of jail free card and refuse to use it. I'm going to stay in jail for three more rolls of the dice. I'm going to say this. I wish I had somebody who played Monopoly. I'm using that sucker the first chance I get. Have I got anybody in here? They got chains on their brains and shackles on their souls. They too need to know that they've been set free. And the good news this morning is that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. And then here it is, our thematic text. And then I'll lift up a few things and I'll head home. And our thematic text, verse 15, he says, And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent. In other words, you just can't launch out and just get to going. You've got to be under orders. Have I got a witness? And Paul seemingly pauses in his exposition to remind us that God is the one 
who sends preachers out to proclaim to the world the good news that Jesus saves. And that news, my brothers and sisters, is a tremendous blessing to all who will believe it and receive it. My brothers and sisters, here I go. When we recognize that God's messengers are sent to be a blessing, we realize that they all should, first of all, have a sincere desire. Let the church say a sincere desire. Yeah, you, you, you got to really believe that you've been shown up call. Oh, yes. Everything that Paul says in chapter 10, my brothers and sisters, grows out of what he says in chapter 10, verse 1. He said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer unto God for Israel is that they might be saved. Any pastor, preacher, or child of God worth their salt should have a burning desire for the souls of humanity. Oh, yes. Any pastor, preacher, or child of God worth their salt should have a burning desire to serve humanity. That you really, truly, and genuinely care about people. All people. Oh, yes. Listen, Paul had a sincere desire, watch this, to save his people. He said, my prayer my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. He concerned about Israel. Who are you concerned about? Who, who, who are your people? Who, who are your people? The people that you care about. The people you roll with. The people you work with. Who, who are you concerned about? Who do you pray for? Who keeps you up at night? Can't get to sleep. They just keep coming on your mind. Pop it up. You can't stop thinking about them. Who is it? Every pastor, preacher, and child of God ought to have a sincere desire for the souls of humanity. We should want everyone to have what we have. Is that right? When you got something good, when you get a hold of something good, you're willing to tell everybody, girl, you need to try my God. Because Christ will make the difference in your life. How do I know? Because I tried him. I tried him for myself. I know what he's done for me. And that's why when you, when you hear those songs about worship, I owe him. Because when I look back and I think back of what he's done, and I look at what he's doing, I can't help but praise him. God is real to me. We should want everyone to serve a God like we, I mean, who wouldn't want to serve a God like our God? Because there is no God like our God. But secondly, not only should preachers have a sincere desire, secondly, as I hurry on, every preacher should recognize that this is their sacred duty. It's their sacred duty. The King James Version in verse 15 says, and how can they preach unless, this is a condition here. You want to preach, but you can't just preach unless you've been sent. During the time of kings, a messenger did not have the luxury of determining when and where he would work. If he was a messenger, he went wherever and whenever the king sent him. Because, listen here, it was a prized privilege to be in the service of the king. In times of peace, he went. In times of war, he went. In times of political unrest, he went. When it was sunny, he went. When it rained, he went. When it snowed, he went. Just like the postman. <laughs> that joker was just like the postman. Through rain, sleet, or snow. He had a message. He carried it. He delivered. Yes, yes. Just like the post office. <laughs> Whenever the king gave him a message, he carried out his duty. For that was the job of the messenger, to proclaim and to publish the very words of the king. And as preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we too are in the service of the king. Moreover, the king of kings, 
the Lord of Lords, each of us, hear me well, has a sacred duty to tell God's people what God has told us. Amen. It is sacred because, hear me well, not everyone has been called to such a task. That's why it's sacred. You've been set aside for sacred service. Everybody can't do what you're doing. And without God's help, no one can carry out such a task. Listen, when the king calls you in, you come. And when the king sends you out, help me preach here, you go. Why? Because it's a privilege to be in the service of the king. And whatever it is that God has called us to do, whether it's preaching, whether it's teaching, whether it's serving in various ministries, we should do it with all of our strength and with all of our might. Why? Because it is a privilege to be in the service of the king. And what we do for God does matter. It matters. Well, I'm through. Thank you for your patience. I told you that as preachers and people of God, that we all should have a sincere desire. Secondly, I lift it up to you that as preachers, each of us has a sacred duty. But I'm going to my seat lastly when I tell you that as preachers, we have a special delivery. We got a special delivery. We got a package that we got to drop. I can remember when, when I worked for the United States Postal Service, every now and then, I would be given what we call a hand-to-hand -hand delivery. This was a special delivery that I would get called to the dock for, and it would be given to me, hand given to me by the expediter, and he would say, take this package directly to Mr. John Doe at this address. You got to put it directly into his hand. It was a special delivery. Paul prefaces this pericope with the preposition, as it is written, he quotes Isaiah 52 and 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are, Lord have mercy here, the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, and uh, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. But Paul, yeah, Paul paraphrases by saying simply, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This preacher here now focuses exclusively on the feet of God's messenger. And someone may be wondering this morning why all of this uh, fascination with the feet of God's preacher. Why are the feet of the messenger so beautiful? <laughs> He'll be preached here. Because the messenger's feet carry a special delivery. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The messenger's feet are the power source that propels them forward in the, the direction of the people. Glory. Their feet are the vehicle that has been deployed to deliver God's uh, decrees. Their feet are the reason God's people receive his message of uh, rescue. The feet of God's preacher are beautiful because they symbolize the progressive work of faithfully proclaiming the gospel of peace on a consistent basis. The feet of the preacher is beautiful because they have prayerfully walked with God. And on Sunday morning, when you hear the approach of God's preacher, as they make their way towards the sacred desk, you ought to get excited, Brother Marvin, because you know that your help is on the way. I say you ought to be excited when you hear them because your hope is on the way. And you know that they have been sent with a special delivery straight from the very heart of God. 
and that they have been sent from God to be a blessing to his people. I'm through, y'all. Thank you so much. I'm through. God bless you all. I hope to see you this afternoon. I got to close here now, but just like God, just like God, every person ought to have a sincere desire to see people saved. Paul told Timothy that I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Let the church say all. Ask God to help them, Paul says, intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. He says, pray this way for kings and all, let the church say all, who are in authority. And he finishes by saying, this is good and it pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. But not only that, beloved, not only should it be a sincere desire, every God-called preacher ought to recognize that they have a sacred duty to faithfully communicate God's word. Listen, sometimes I stay up longer than I planned because to the best of my ability, Dr. Edmund, I just want to get it right. I want to get it right. I want to hear what God told me to tell the people. And I don't take the responsibility lightly. We realize that we have been sent by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to declare his decrees. And therefore, when things get difficult, we cannot stop. We cannot quit. We cannot resign our post or relinquish our duty. We must preach. We got to preach. To proclaim the truth in season and out of season. When we're sick and when we're well. When we feel like it. And when we don't feel like it. Nehemiah said, I'm engaged in a great work. And I can't come down. Oh, glory to God. The preacher must remain, must abide, and must endure because they have a sacred duty. They're in the service of the king. But lastly, beloved, God's messenger has a special delivery. And like the mailman, not Carl Malone, but I'm talking about the real mailman, he must deliver. His message is marked urgent. And it is time sensitive. That special delivery is the good news that Jesus saves. Jesus rescues. There is another way. There is a better way. And I drop by to tell you that Jesus is what? The only way. The good news that there's a way out. There's a way in. And there's a way through. And I stopped by this morning on my way to heaven to declare to you today that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And in him, you can have life eternal. Jesus calls us in to save us. And then he sends us out to serve others. Will you respond? Will you respond? Will you respond to God's message of rescue? The door of the church is open. Man, woman, letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Now's your time. Now's your turn. Step out. Step up and receive salvation.
When I say goodbye to the troubles of this life, a city bright and fair where the streets are paved with gold and they never, 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 ever grow old. You promised me a mansion there. Yeah.
Oh, what peace. Oh, what happiness. When we get over there in the great by and by. When there'll be no more Sunday morning, but always hide it, hide it. I talk like I'm from down south. But oh, what a time is going to be when we get there. But can I let you in on something? You don't have to wait until the by and by to have happiness here today. I say you don't have to wait until the by and by to experience joy everlasting, to have peace in the midst of the storm, and to have happiness. You can have Jesus right here, right now. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's right here. That's right now. And that also in the by and by. Oh, what happiness. Come on, put your hands together. Thank God for what you heard. Hallelujah. We thank and praise all those who are visitors who come on this Back to Church Sunday. Just a reminder, we would like to host a brief fellowship in our Welcome Center immediately following the worship service. We do hope that you would come and attend. It's hosted by the Evangelism Ministry. Those individuals wearing the green shirts. Come on, y'all stand up right quick. Hey, Sister Ernie, back in the house. Come on, stand up, girl. Stand on up so I can see you with your shirt on. Everybody with green shirts on. Amen. Part of the evangelism ministry, how we thank God for those individuals. Come on, let's all stand as we prepare to go down from this place, this corporate prayer. I look forward to seeing each of you. Come on, take a picture of all of them, PR, so I can see the back of their heads to know who was here. I want to see all the back of their heads so that we can see them at 3 o'clock. Pray. our silent tears. Thou hast brought us thus far on the way. Thou hast by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Our master and our king, how we thank you today for what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, and even what our hearts have felt. We thank you, O oh God, for the reminder that not only have preachers been called, but we have all been called into this world to be a blessing to people, to help those who are hurting, and to extend mercy to those who stand in need of it. Lord God, we thank you today for everyone under the sound of my weak voice. We thank you how they've even pressed their way through the pouring rain to hear a word from you. And so God, our prayer is that they have not come in vain, and we thank you that your word declares that when it goes out, it shall not, it will not return void. Yeah, yeah. Lord God, we thank you 
that you continue to have your hand upon the church, these your people. And oh God, our prayer is that you would look in and have mercy on those who are sick and bereaved. Oh Lord God, we pray for the Emmanuel family, oh God, as he prepares, he and his family and friends prepare to get on the road, traveling the highways and the byways. Lord, be with them. Give them traveling grace. And then, God, we ask that you extend to them arriving mercy. Our prayer also is that you will remember Bill Salisbury and his family as they travel north to eulogize one of his dear members. Lord God, we thank you for that family. We thank you for Brother Bill and all that he is and does for this ministry. Be with him, O oh God, in his time of bereavement. Our prayer is also for those among us who are sick, O oh God. Remember Brother Lewis Newell, Father God, who's had a minor slip and fall. Father God, be with him as he recovers. Father God, touch him where he is hurting. Heal him as only you know how. Thank you that we know you as a doctor in the sick room. So look in and have mercy. Encourage the hearts of Sister Adrian and Sister Ida in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we lift up before you Brother Carl Simon, the son of Sister Christine. Father God, we thank you, oh God, for how you worked a miracle in his life. And, and he is a living testimony to your ability to miraculously heal and deliver from sickness and disease. And now, oh God, our prayer is that you would give him the wisdom to know which decisions he needs to make in order that he might experience a better quality of life. And then comfort Sister Christine, Father God, as a loving mother who is lifting up her son to you. Remember Brother Charles White as well, her brother. Father God, we thank you for him and his wonderful, humble spirit, oh God. Touch him, heal and encourage in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, we lift up our young people to you today. As it's been well documented, they face so many challenges. Father God, temptation on every side. 24 hours of constant temptation to be pulled away through their minds, being tempted through all various images. And Father God, we remember young Jaylene today. Father God, we lift up the name of Sister Jaylene. Father God, you know all about her. You know her heart. You created her at the laying of the foundation of the world. And Father God, when I think about Jaylene, I, I think about how she symbolizes many young people today who are hurting, Father God, who have been uh, embittered by some situation in the past. It has caused them to turn their backs on those that care for them the most, and more importantly, to turn their backs on the God of their creation. And so, Father God, I ask that you would touch the hearts of young people, that you would turn their minds and their hearts back to you, Father God the author and the finisher of their faith, that they might look up and live while they're yet young, that they may come to know the reality of having a relationship with the true and living God. And then, oh God, our prayer is also for the eight ministers who will be ordained this afternoon. Father God, plant your word deep down in their hearts and plant within them a deep desire to be faithful to what you called them to, oh God. Father God, allow them to run on with a fervor that they will not quit, they will not stop until you tell them that you are finished with it. Father God, encourage them to lean into one another and to look to you beyond the hills from which cometh their help. For all their help cometh from you and you alone. And then God, we lastly thank you for the members of this great church called Second Baptist Church of Elgin. We thank you how we continue to carry on your work in and around this wonderful community. Help us, oh God, to continue to be the church that you're looking for in these last and evil days. We're going down now from this place, but never from your presence. We need your grace that we might continue to run this race until we meet again and you continue to bless us and keep us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. We hope to see you all this Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Amen. Come on, give me the holy wave. Yeah. I'll be with you. God.
him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power now and ever amen We thank you for worshiping with us today. And if you're looking to connect with a loving church that faithfully teaches God's message of hope, then visit our website at sbclgenil.org and follow the link that says join our church. We hope to see you soon at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin, where we live and learn God's word together.